Hey there and welcome back. Today we are diving into the world of sprockets. They're essential components in many machines and systems, but they're often overlooked. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of what sprockets are, the different types, their features, how they fail, and their advantages and disadvantages. Let's get into it. So what exactly is a sprocket? Sprockets are toothed wheels designed to mesh with a chain or track. They're crucial in transferring rotational motion and power from one component to another in machines, especially in vehicles, bicycles and industrial equipment. Think of a sprocket as a cousin of gears. But instead of meshing with another gear, sprockets are specifically meant to engage with a chain. In order for the sprocket assembly to function properly, it is crucial that the sprocket and chain complement each other. You'll often see them in applications where movement needs to be both precise and durable. Now let's talk about the types of sprockets. Sprockets come in various designs depending on their application. Here are some common types. First we have simplex, duplex and triplex sprockets. These names refer to the number of rows of teeth on the sprocket. Simplex has one row, duplex has two and triplex has three. The more rows, the higher the load carrying capacity. Next up, roller chain sprockets. Roller chain sprockets are key components in mechanical systems that require durable, reliable power transfer. These sprockets are designed with teeth that fit precisely with the links of a roller chain, allowing them to move together in perfect sync. When the sprocket rotates, it grips the chain and pulls it along, creating an efficient transfer of motion from one part of a system to another. The main advantages of roller chain sprockets lie in their strength and precision. They're built to handle high loads and because the teeth lock directly with the chain links, they provide precise, slip-free movement. Durability is another major benefit. Made from tough materials like steel, they can withstand demanding environments and long-term use, but these benefits come with some trade-offs. Roller chain systems can be noisier than belt-driven systems, especially at high speeds, and they require regular maintenance to keep everything running smoothly. This includes lubrication and inspection to prevent wear. Additionally, roller chain sprockets tend to be heavier, so they may not be the best choice for lightweight or compact applications. Roller chain sprockets are widely used in applications that require durable and reliable power transmission across various industries. You'll find them in conveyor systems where they drive chains that move products through assembly lines, packaging facilities and warehouses. They're also common in agricultural machinery where they power equipment like harvesters and tractors, often under heavy loads and challenging conditions. In the automotive world, roller chain sprockets are used in motorcycles and go-karts to transfer engine power to the wheels. They're also crucial in industrial machinery, such as printing presses, textile machines and manufacturing equipment, where their precise, controlled movement ensures consistent operation. Overall, roller chain sprockets are a go-to for any application that requires strong, reliable power transfer with minimal slip, especially in systems that run continuously or under high load. Then we have idler sprockets. What is an idler sprocket? Unlike a drive sprocket that transfers power from the motor or a driven sprocket that outputs power to another component, idler sprockets play a more supportive role. They're not there to transmit power. They're there to guide and tension the chain. Think of them as the unsung heroes of chain systems, quietly keeping everything running smoothly in the background. Idler sprockets serve two main purposes. One, they keep the chain tensioned, and two, they guide the chain along a set path. Proper chain tension is crucial. It prevents sagging, slipping, and even potential damage to the chain or sprockets over time, and by guiding the chain, idler sprockets ensure it avoids obstacles and follows an exact path, which is especially helpful in complex setups. Idler sprockets are usually installed somewhere between the drive and driven sprockets. You might see them on the slack side of the chain, where they help control movement without affecting power transmission. They spin freely with the chain, helping to manage any slack that develops and keeping the chain in line. Idler sprockets are usually installed between the drive sprocket, connected to the motor or engine, and the driven sprocket, connected to the output component, allowing them to influence chain alignment and tension. Idler sprockets come in a couple of different styles. 
Some are fixed in place, providing a constant guide for the chain, while others are adjustable or even spring-loaded. Adjustable idler sprockets are great for systems where the chain may stretch or wear over time. They let you fine-tune the tension to keep everything running at peak efficiency. Using idler sprockets has some major advantages. They reduce wear on the chain and other sprockets, extend the life of your equipment, and even cut down on noise by preventing chain vibration. Plus, they make it possible to design more complex chain layouts, which can be essential in industrial equipment and certain vehicle applications. Double pitch sprockets are sprockets with teeth spaced twice as far apart as those on standard sprockets. With double the pitch, the teeth are spaced farther apart, which helps distribute load over a greater area, reducing tension on the chain and subsequent wear. They're specifically designed to work with double pitch chains, which also have double the distance between chain link pins. This means double pitch sprockets engage with every other chain pin, giving them a longer pitch and more spaced out teeth. They're commonly used in applications that need a slower, smoother movement, like conveyor systems, where the load might be lighter, but the spacing and flexibility are essential. They're also a great choice for applications that cover longer distances, as they put less wear on the chain compared to standard sprockets. You'll find double pitch sprockets in everything from package conveyors to automated assembly lines, and even in certain agricultural machinery, where smooth, steady motion is key. Double pitch sprockets are often made from durable materials like steel or stainless steel, ideal for environments where reliability is critical. Some models also have heat treated teeth for longer wear resistance. Lastly, tapered bore sprockets, also known as taper lock sprockets, a tapered bore sprocket, is a sprocket designed with a conical or tapered inner bore that uses a special bushing system called a taper lock or tapered bushing to secure it onto a shaft. This setup allows for a tight, secure fit without the need for keyways or set screws, which can sometimes loosen over time. Tapered bore sprockets work by utilizing a conical bushing that fits into the tapered bore of the sprocket. When the bushing is inserted and tightened, it expands to grip the shaft, creating a secure, slip-free connection. This tight fit distributes force evenly around the shaft, helping to prevent slippage, especially under high torque loads. Tapered bore sprockets are popular for three reasons. First, they're solid, no wiggling or slipping. Second, they're easy to install and remove. If you need to take it off, just loosen the bushing and off it comes. Third, they protect the shaft. No need for set screws or extra keyways that can wear down the shaft over time. They're great for heavy duty applications. Of course, nothing's perfect. These sprockets can be a bit more expensive up front because of the bushing system and they're a little bulkier than regular sprockets, so you'll need a bit more space. Finally, if you're dealing with extreme forces, you'll want to keep an eye on it while it's super secure. Over time, the bushing can loosen if it's not installed correctly. Now that we know the types, let's go over some key features of sprockets. These features can make a big difference in their performance and suitability for specific applications. Pitch is the distance between the centers of two adjacent teeth. It must match the chain pitch exactly or the sprocket and chain won't engage properly. The number of teeth affects the gear ratio and the speed torque balance in the system. More teeth means smoother operation but less torque, while fewer teeth mean more torque but potentially rougher movement. Sprockets are often made of materials like steel, cast iron or plastic each chosen for its strength, durability or lightweight. The hub on a sprocket is the thicker central part that extends from the sprocket's flat body and connects to the shaft of the machine. Sprockets are often classified by their hub, type A sprocket. These are also called plain hub. The sprocket has a flat face, no added thickness or hubs. These sprockets are usually mounted flush against a machine surface using bolts or screws. They are used in conveyor systems, roller chain drives, agricultural machinery and packaging equipment. Type B sprocket. These are also called single hub. The sprocket has a hub on one side, allows for better alignment and load distribution, used where the sprocket needs to be mounted securely on a shaft, used in conveyor drives, motor drives, agricultural, construction equipment and industrial machinery, mixers, crushers and compressors. Type C sprockets. These are also called double hub with hubs on both sides of the sprocket, which provides enhanced stability and alignment on the shaft, used when the sprocket needs to withstand significant forces and maintain precise alignment over long periods, used in heavy machinery, mixers, large conveyor systems and crushers. 
Type D sprocket, detachable hub design where the sprocket's hub is separate and bolted onto the sprocket. Often used in modular systems, manufacturing and assembly lines, high maintenance equipment, conveyors and material handling systems, power transmission systems and heavy duty industrial applications, mining, forestry and construction. Hubs regardless of type often come with specific features like keyways, set screws or tapered bores to ensure the sprocket stays securely fixed, allowing it to transfer rotational motion effectively without slipping. Then there's the tapered or bushed hub, designed with a tapered bore to fit a special bushing. This allows easy mounting and removal, which is especially helpful when you need frequent maintenance or replacements. We also have the keyed hub, which includes a keyway to lock the hub onto the shaft, preventing rotation or slippage. This type is perfect for high torque applications where a solid, slip-free connection is critical. Another option is the split hub. This hub is split along its length and typically uses bolts to clamp down onto the shaft. It's great for retrofit applications, as you don't need access to the shaft's end to install it. For more permanent applications, there's the weld-on hub. As the name suggests, these hubs are welded directly to the shaft, making them ideal for heavy-duty use. Finally, the flanged hub is designed with an outward flange around the perimeter. This extra surface area allows for more mounting bolts, adding stability and load-bearing capacity. Each type of hub is designed with specific applications in mind, so understanding their differences helps in choosing the best one for your needs. From the simple, plain hub to the durable, flanged hub, each has its role in effective power transmission. Sprockets come with various bore types, which refers to the different configurations of the inner hole or bore of a sprocket, which fits onto the shaft of a machine. The bore type you choose depends on how the sprocket will be mounted, the load it needs to handle, and how easy it should be to install and remove, such as plain, finished or tapered to fit specific shaft requirements. A plain bore is a simple cylindrical hole without any additional features. They are typically used when a set screw, pin or other fastener will hold the sprocket in place on the shaft. Plain bores are cost effective however, they can slip under heavy loads if not secured properly. A finished bore is machined to precise dimensions and often include a keyway and set screw to prevent rotation. They are common in higher load applications where precise alignment and secure attachment to the shaft are essential. They are secure and easy to install. However, they are limited to specific shaft sizes due to precise machining. Tapered bore or taper lock is a conical or tapered inner bore that uses a tapered bushing to lock the sprocket onto the shaft securely. They are used in high torque applications where a strong slip-free connection is essential. Advantages of using a tapered bore? Easy to install and remove, distributes load evenly and reduces shaft wear. However, they require additional space for the bushing system and are typically more expensive. Split bore is a bore that is split down the middle, allowing the sprocket to clamp tightly around the shaft. Useful for shafts that are difficult to access as it can be installed without needing to slide over the shaft's ends. However, they are not as secure for high torque applications compared to other bore types. Quick disconnect, QD. Bore is a unique style of removable bushing that allows for quick installation and removal. Used in heavy-duty applications where frequent sprocket changes are needed, they are quick and convenient for maintenance, secure under high loads. However, they require specific QD bushings, making it slightly more expensive. Hex bore is a hexagon-shaped bore that matches hex-shaped shafts. Common in light to medium-duty applications like in agricultural equipment or conveyors, they provide a solid, slip-free connection, easy to align. They are limited to systems using hex shafts, not ideal for high-torque settings. Each bore type offers a different level of security, ease of installation and suitability for specific loads and applications. So choosing the right one depends on the mechanical needs of the system and the desired level of maintenance flexibility. What is the difference between a hub and a bore, you ask? The hub is the thickened central part that extends from the sprocket's body. It's what connects the sprocket securely to the shaft, ensuring stability. The hub can include features like keyways, set screws, or even a taper lock mechanism, all of which keep the sprocket firmly in place as it transfers rotational motion. On the other hand, the bore is the hole inside the hub where the shaft fits through. The bore's design, whether plain, keyed or tapered, determines how the sprocket aligns 
and locks onto the shaft. So, in simple terms, the hub supports and mounts the sprocket on the shaft, while the bore creates a precise fit to keep it aligned. Here's a breakdown of the key parts in a sprocket. Sprocket teeth, the outermost edge of the sprocket that engages with the chain, transferring rotational movement. Hub, the central thicker section of the sprocket that provides stability and connects the sprocket to the shaft. Bore, the inner circular hole in the center of the hub where the shaft fits through, allowing the sprocket to rotate with it. Bushing, a removable component within the bore that ensures a secure fit on the shaft, reducing wear and enabling easier installation or removal. If we look at the sprocket, the order from outside to inside of the sprocket would look like this. Sprocket teeth, outer edge hub, thicker central section around the bore, bore, the central hole in the hub, bushing fits inside the bore, holding the shaft securely. Each of these parts has a specific role in ensuring the sprocket functions effectively for power transmission or movement within a machine. When selecting a sprocket, there are several key measurements to keep in mind to ensure proper fit and performance. First up, the pitch. This is the distance between the centers of two consecutive teeth. It's essential to match the chain size, as the wrong pitch can lead to misalignment and wear. The number of teeth is another critical factor, as it determines the speed ratio when paired with another sprocket. Generally, more teeth mean slower speed, but higher torque, while fewer teeth mean faster speed. The outside diameter, or OD, is the distance across the sprocket from the tips of the teeth. This helps you ensure there's enough space in your system to accommodate the sprocket. Then we have the pitch diameter, which is slightly smaller than the outside diameter and represents the effective diameter at which the chain wraps around the sprocket. It's important for calculating speed and chain movement. Next, the bore diameter is the central hole where the shaft fits. This needs to match the shaft size or be compatible with a bushing for secure mounting. For sprockets with a hub, you'll need to consider the hub diameter, which is the outer diameter of the hub, and the hub length, which is how far the hub extends from the sprocket. Both measurements impact clearance and alignment. The tooth width is another vital dimension. It's the thickness of each tooth, which must fit well with the chain links to prevent wear or slipping. If your sprocket has a keyway, you'll want to check the keyway width and depth. These measurements help lock the sprocket onto the shaft, providing extra security in high torque applications. And finally, the face width is the width of the sprocket surface that engages with the chain. This should match the chain width to ensure a smooth, reliable connection. By understanding these important measurements, you can select the right sprocket for your system, achieving efficient power transmission and extending the life of both your sprocket and chain. Like all mechanical parts, sprockets can fail. Here are some common failure modes to be aware of. One of the most common issues is wear. Over time, the sprocket teeth wear down due to friction with the chain. This wear can lead to poor engagement, slippage and decreased efficiency. But sprocket misalignment causes uneven wear on both the sprocket and the chain. Misalignment is often caused by poor installation or adjustments and can lead to early failure. For sprockets in harsh or outdoor environments, corrosion is a big issue. It weakens the sprocket, making it prone to fractures and shortening its lifespan. Cracks or fractures are typically caused by overloading or using a sprocket with unsuitable material for the application. This can cause catastrophic failure in high-stress scenarios. Now, let's wrap up with the advantages and disadvantages of sprockets. First, the advantages. Sprockets and chains are reliable for transmitting power in heavy-duty applications. They don't slip, meaning they're ideal for systems that require precise movement. Sprockets also perform well under a variety of conditions, from low to high speeds. On the downside, sprockets and chains require regular maintenance. Without proper lubrication and tension, they can wear out quickly. They're also noisier than alternatives like belts, and the chain link setup can be prone to corrosion and stretching over time. Are you worried about your sprockets wearing out too quickly? Before we conclude, let's touch on some essential maintenance tips to extend the lifespan of your sprockets. Regular inspection is key. Look for signs of wear, such as hooked teeth or elongated chain links. Always keep your sprockets and chains clean and well lubricated to prevent rust and reduce friction. Proper tension is crucial. A loose chain can slip off while an overly tight chain can cause premature wear. Lastly, consider using protective covers to shield the sprockets from dirt and debris. 
In conclusion, sprockets are essential components in many mechanical systems. When working on a large industrial machine, the important thing to remember is that while sprockets and gears may look similar, the defining feature is their function. Sprockets connect to chains, allowing them to transfer motion along a chain drive system. Gears, on the other hand, connect directly to other gears, transmitting motion through gear teeth that mesh together. So when you see two similar components, just ask yourself, is it connected to a chain or another gear? That's the key difference between a sprocket and a gear. Understanding sprocket types, features and potential failure modes can help in selecting the right sprocket for your needs. Thank you for watching Sprockets 101. We hope these tips help you maintain your sprockets for longer life and better performance. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more informative videos. And leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions.